Mazda's most significant compact SUV is this car, the CX-30. It borrows its engineering from the Mazda 3 hatch, but clothes it with the trendier SUV body styling that family buyers now increasingly want. Highlights here include eye-catching looks, cutting-edge engines, and one of the best cabins in the segment. If you're shopping in this sector, you probably weren't considering this Mazda, but you probably should be. It wasn't very long ago that we advised you to abandon all hope of driving enjoyment if you came in search of a compact SUV. Uh, this CX-30 sets out to prove it doesn't have to be that way. And it starts off with the huge advantage of being based on what is, in our view, currently the best handling family hatch in the segment, the Mazda 3. Like that car, it offers buyers a couple of 2-litre, mild hybrid embellished Skyactiv petrol engines, but there's no diesel, and a real drive driver-orientated vibe. That's thanks to a lovely wrist flick six-speed manual gear change. Uh, a six-speed auto is optional, plus feel some steering, perfect pedal placement, and an effective G-vectoring control plus torque vectoring system to help you to get the power down through the bends. If traction is a priority for you, then it might be worth considering the optional iActive all-wheel drive system that we're trying here. But uh, for that, you'll have to have chosen the more powerful of the two engine options, the 180 PS Skyactiv X unit that we're trying here. This uses a tiny supercharger to boost torque and what the brand calls Spark Controlled Compressed Ignition, or SPCCI, a patented lean burn process that delivers exceptional efficiency. Hence, a very decent set of running cost figures, a WLTP reading of 47.9 MPG and an NEDC rated 105 grams per kilometer of CO2. Uh, those are significantly better than what you could expect from the lesser 122 PS Skyactiv G power plant. Uh, because neither of those engines has turbocharging, they can feel a little lacking in pulling power, and that's another reason why we think you're going to really want to get the Skyactiv X unit in this car. Ride quality is a little softer than it is in the Mazda 3, but you sit a fraction higher, and there's the same exceptional refinement at cruising speeds. Right, time to take a look in the cabin. Everything here is as smart, classy and well finished as it is in the Mazda 3. Uh, to suit the crossover vibe, you do sit slightly higher than you would in one of those, but the difference is fractional and you're not as commandingly placed as you would be in most rival models. Uh, if you can live with that though, there's loads to like here with a snug, condensed cockpit area for the driver and a clean, airy open space around the passenger. Um, breaking with convention is Mazda's decision not to use touchscreen functionality for the 8.8 inch center dash monitor. We agree with them that using this command control rotary dial is less distracting to the driver. Uh, ergonomically, the design of this interior is near perfect and it's well equipped. A head up driving display is standard across the range as is cushion tilt adjustment for the supportive seat. Over the shoulder visibility, that isn't perfect, but blind spot monitoring has been standardized to compensate for that. So it's mostly all good. Uh, where the design proposition of this model's Mazda 3 sister car started to slightly unravel though, was when it came to rear seat space. So can this CX-30 do better? Once inside, it's certainly a little more spacious and a touch less gloomy than it is in Mazda 3 hatch, but not much. Uh, several rivals offer more space than this. Headroom is fine, but leg space remains a touch restricted by class standards. Uh, you could certainly live with it though, particularly if this was merely a second family car. Let's finish with a look at the boot, which offers 430 litres of capacity. Uh, that's not particularly large by class standards, but it's enough for a baby buggy and a carry-on bag. Uh, fold down the rear bench and you'll get a fairly flat area with 1,406 litres of capacity. Mazda reckons that this might become its best-selling model, and if that happens, then the CX-30 would have achieved that position on merit. Uh, the cabin quality shames several premium badged models in this segment that we can think of, and the uh, standard equipment levels that Mazda is offering here definitely does. But will the lack of a premium badge ultimately hold this car back? Well, its close rival, Toyota CHR, has already proved that that needn't be an impediment. 
As with any SUV of this sort, you're paying a premium for the looks and for a bit of extra space, but the CX-30 feels worthy of it. We think it absolutely has to be on your shortlist amongst crossovers of this kind.